Welcome to John Michael's Rockbox. I'm your host, John Michael. I get to host this show that, well, it's a show about you. If you're a musician, if you're a solo artist, if you're a painter, uh, if you write books, your dance club, well, I'd like to hear from you. Send me your information to jmrockbox at mcaet.org. All right, we'd like to hear from you, and somebody will get right back to you. Now, also, if you'd like to watch the show, simply go to mcaet.org forward slash watch, and you'll see all the variations on how you can watch the rock box. And while this show really wouldn't last without you, so we do definitely need your donations, and visit mcaet.org forward slash donate. We'd like to welcome you to the rock box, and with that being said, let's head on over and meet our guest, and welcome to the rock box. All right, man, welcome to the rock box. Good to have you back joining us again, and today, we're very excited to uh, bring you a great guy, Mike Osborne. Mike Osborne, what's going on? Hey, not much, just glad to be here. Thanks for having <laughs> yeah, me. Yeah, it's a good, I tell you what, if, I don't know if you've ever heard uh, Mike Osborne Perform before, but if you haven't, you're in for a treat today because you're going to hear him here on the Rock Box. Mike, how long have you, how long have you been at this? There's kind of a weird story. There's like two halves to it, you right. know, with a big, huge gap in, in between. Sure. But, you know, I, I took my first guitar lesson when I was 13, right. chasing this girl that I really liked. She was yeah. taking guitar class. Didn't get the girl, kept the guitar, you know. <laughs> <clears throat> and by the time I was 16, I was in like regular working band as a lead guitarist. Sure. And that went on and then started having kids really early. Like 19. Uh, and so pretty by, by the time my early 20s came along, I, I pretty much had to stop playing even part time. Oh, you know, and just oh, sure. yeah, right, put okay. it down. Okay. Yeah, because I have four kids. And um, that was it. I never expected to touch a guitar again. And then about 10 years ago, I injured my back severely. And uh, the kids were all grown and moved out, you know, because I had them so young. <laughs> right, yeah, right. <laughs> and I go, what the heck do I do now, you know? So yeah. I turned back to music, and I've been on this steep and winding path for 10 years this time around. Oh, yeah, yeah, and, and you know, he says steep and winding. It's, it's a journey, yeah, it, and really, it, it's really not always, it's not even just music. I mean, it's any, whatever craft you decide you're going to get into, yeah. if you think you're going to be a comedian, an actor, an artist, a painter, mm -hmm. teacher, yeah, you know, because um, it's all it's all artistic, yeah. You know? And so, as long as I, I think you have uh, the drive and the belief in yourself, because mm -hmm. that's really what it takes you to keep going. No, yeah, uh, yeah, to, to pursue your your love, which becomes a yeah. love. It yeah. became a love at first. I was really not happy about it. Sure, because I knew how hard it was going to be. I had done it when I was younger. Yeah. Now I was older and I hadn't practiced in 15 years. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Didn't know right. anybody because now I was in the Bay. I hadn't okay. lived here before. Right. I knew, I knew how hard it was going to be and I, I wasn't thrilled about it, but I just didn't have a lot of choices. I'm sure I would have given up if I had a choice. Right. You know, that was, that was the thing that kept me going is, you know, okay, forget this, quit and do what? <laughs> it, was, it was all I had left. Right. I've been very lucky. <laughs> yeah. You know, but uh, that was that was probably what my secret to my success more than anything. Yeah. <laughs> but we well, did burn the boats, so they speak. <laughs> and it, you know, it, and it's not saying that uh, you know, yeah, you, you have to like hit a rock to to come back into music if you decided to get out or anything for that matter. Uh, it's just sometimes you know, it's when you're dealt things. And in, in your case, Mike, it's, you know, he had a family and, you know, he did the right thing, you know, taking care of the family and stuff like that. And yeah. The back burner to the music, because yeah. it is tough. It is it tough. Is, it is, it is you tough, know. you know, and it's wonderful, too, at the same time. Sure. There's times that doing it for a living is different than just doing it for the fun of it. It's way more frustrating. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> you know. Yeah, I envy the guys who get to do it part time and have some kind of day job. But, right. <laughs> yeah. But, um, but you know, it, it, this is the hand I've been dealt, and I'm playing it the best I can. Right. No. You know. Well, you know, and you get to the point when you have uh, good musicians that are sitting there helping you, that makes the job fun. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Does it make sense? And where you don't oh, have, yeah. I don't because Mike 
Mike Osborne is the Mike Osborne. It's not Mike Osborne band, but he acquires musicians to play. And so you don't have to act like the boss. He goes, right. I'm Mike. How's it going, guys? This is what I like, you know, and blah, blah, blah. And right. then everybody does their thing. And That's then, right. Yeah. That's really, uh, I learned that years ago. You get just the good musicians. Right. And then I don't micromanage. Right. That's I. The reason why they're working with me is because I know that they're bringing something to the table and they know what they're doing. So here's here's some basic parameters. Let's see what happens tonight. And it does make a difference from musician to musician. Sure. You know. So that that's been really cool. I've been working with the same drummer for several years, Rick, who was on film. Right. Who, who's with me today? Um, and I've got like kind of a pool of bass players I've been using. And, but it yeah, ebbs absolutely. and flows over the years. You know. Yeah. It's just the nature of the modern music business. You know? It is. I mean, you know, if you find yourself playing in any band, even the ones I play on, everybody has side projects. Mm -hmm. You know, and mm -hmm. I don't honestly anymore can't really say that it's you know one band is the band because mm -hmm. you know I, I've ended up I'm now I'm playing in like several to myself and like at one point it was like five or six. Yeah. You know, yeah. and the, <laughs> the saving grace really about doing that kind of a thing is that you get to meet a lot of great people, as we do here on the Rock Box. Yeah. Mike concluded is, you. you know, you get to experience different um, energies. I mean, and, yeah. and you learn actually playing with other musicians. Oh, yeah. Right? Yeah. And so. Yeah. That's well put. The different energies and, and you learn. You're right. Yeah. And so Mike, Mike has gone out and, you know, and. It's become Mike Osborne, and then he gets to acquire the musicians to play with. As a matter of fact, what we're going to do now is allow you to see a couple of the musicians that he's brought into the rock box to, to play on uh, a couple of these songs here. So I think we'll just jump into it and cool. let people experience Mike Osborne, <laughs> and then we'll talk about where we can find Mike. Sounds good. All right, <laughs> check it out. Mike Osborne on the rock box. <laughs> It's a 
loving time. It's a loving time. Loving time. Loving time. Oh 
Huh? See what I told you? Mike Osborne. Man, that's some good stuff there, Mike. Oh, thank you. Well done, thank buddy. You. Thank so, you, thank uh, you. you know, before we jump in some uh, stuff that uh, we had talked to Mike about prior, where can they find you website wise and all that? Uh, www.mikeosborneband. And, and the Osborne, it's the, there's no E or U, it's the Scottish Osborne, not the English one. <laughs> so it's O S B O R N, mikeosborneband.com. Uh, there you go. You can check that out and look them up, and you have uh, pictures. You have stuff everything. about you. Everything. Links to my social media. Links to every everywhere I am online. Video, pictures, clips of tunes. And it's just that's the best place to go. To that would be the best because it's like a watershed for every place you can there find you go. me. That's We've a got good it idea. Set up really well. So go check it out and uh, MikeOsborneBand.com. And so, well, you got this uh, sample. It's not the goods from Mike Osborne, which. Uh, we have in our hot little hands uh, in the doghouse from Mike Osborne. Mm -hmm. So, and uh, of course, he gave me another one. This is that's this my is, first one. This yeah. is the first one that I get to have. Uh, mm -hmm. Fire and Fury. So, but so the songs that you played today are from the they're, in the doghouse. They're off the in the doghouse album, which um, um, the recording studio I recorded in mm. was called Doghouse Studios. Right. So I, I named it in the doghouse, and it really I know that really pleased the producer. He got a kick out of that. Nice. It's a, he was a, a good friend of mine it, um, in the L.A. area. He was known as B.B. Chung King. His name was Alan Mirakatani, and uh, he had sort of gotten away from the touring end because he had kids, sure. you know, and he wanted to be home more. So he built a recording studio and was writing a lot of music. The songs that I played, he wrote in those those particular ones. I wrote some of the other ones on the album. Right and. Um, Sadly, he passed away suddenly of a heart attack last summer, just over a year ago. And um, but uh, he'll be remembered forever uh, by his music and, and the work that he did. This was actually one of the last co projects he completed before really? he passed away. Yeah. Wow! And he and did he uh, mm. did he acquire these musicians on here for you, or these oh, people yeah. that you knew? Yeah, I went down and stayed at his home while we recorded in sure. Burbank. Nice and. Uh, uh, Teddy Andreatis does the keyboard track, dear friend of his, uh, who worked with um, uh, Guns N' Roses and Carole King, and just a big, huge list of, you know, sure. I mean, and the, the drummer and the bass player was the same, the same thing, and those guys, man, it was like lightning. In fact, there's a, 
there's a studio, there's a track, an uh, instrumental track called In the Doghouse mm -hmm. on there. And what you're hearing is the only time we played that. Really? Yeah, it was recorded live in one take. Ah. That's why I had the producer leave my little comments in, like the drummers counting us in, oh, and, so I'm, the whole thing's and I'm going, out. "That was fun," you know. And I, I, I go, "I want." I thought I was just showing him the song real quick. Let's just roll with this. Yeah. And he was like, "Hey, it's a rap." I'm like, "No, no, no! I wanted to do more." And he was like, "I don't know. You can't top that. That was great." And then I'm like, "Okay, then leave those comments in. <laughs> That's everything. Let's, in. let's make it really sound really, really grassroots." Yeah. And so I get a kick out of that. Yeah, that's absolutely, that's a great, <laughs> man. So, so again, you want to check it out. It's uh, In the Doghouse, and Mike Osborne, and you get to hear that that track and, mm -hmm. and you know, read up on it. Of course, don't forget his website where you could find it and mm -hmm. find these on there as well. So, you know, going into the studio and stuff, Mike, it's, it's uh, we always like to get to your, you know, the artists that we have on, perspective on playing, rehearsing and all that stuff is importance of, of those things like rehearsing again the way I got into this like I said earlier is a very weird unusual way sure. so um, I do very very little rehearsing right pretty much what you see live it's it's really happening and there's a whole lot of spontaneous moments and um, right. You know, like some of those tracks in the studio were one take. Sure, <laughs> sure, know? no, I get it. Um, I don't, so I'm not a diehard uh, rehearsal guy. Um, not because I don't think it's a good thing or that I should, it's just, you know, I it's get 24 work. hours a day. Right. You know, and then I'm battling injuries and all that, that sometimes I'm, I gig so much that sometimes I'm like, I, I can't touch a guitar or I might not make that performance, you right. know? So a lot right. of that kind of stuff I'm up against, but you sure. know, I try to when I can, but it's right. not that much. And, um, and um, yeah, I mean, if you're honing your craft, it's a good idea to sit down and do what you can when you can. Yeah. And that's really it for everybody in anything, <laughs> you know? Yeah. And uh, if you are in a band or is it a band, uh, yeah, that's a good idea because now you're, you've got personalities yeah. that have to you know, intermingle, you know, but when you're dealing like with you, just Mike Osborne, here's my CD, learn these yeah. songs, and do they learn it the way it's on here um, like that? No, because the live version is often different than the studio version. Right. And, and, and like I said, we really have some wonderful spontaneous moments sure. where it'll, it'll morph you know, it's like you said, it's like we're feeding off each other's energies. Right. And it just morphs spontaneously sometimes into something totally. And one time we went into this big, long psychedelic, like, reprise on some song. I have no idea where that came from. <laughs> we were doing it before I even thought about it, you know? <laughs> and the band was just following. They were just right there. It was really cool. Oh, it was my favorite moments. Good. I gotta love that kind of my stuff. My favorite moments. He still did it. He's doing what he loves to do, which is what you can do. Remember, you can always find us at... Uh, uh, on facebook.com slash John Michaels Rockbox. And so, well, Mike Osborne band.com where you can find Mike. We're going to find him on uh, the Rockbox here as we get him on another song. Thanks. <laughs> Thanks. Graveyard. <laughs> Just goes to break. Dig a hole deep down in the ground. Gonna bear the hatchet so it can't be found. It gonna die in a company graveyard. Ain't gonna die in a company In a company graveyard, you ain't gonna die. In a company graveyard, oh, red nose, long black hoods, drivers blind. Without a 
Ain't gonna die in a company grave. 